Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Julie. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Yes, not too bad. Thank you. Not too bad. Good. So um, I've been very much looking forward to our chat about income tax. Have you? Have, not many people would say that, Andy. <laughs> well, you know. So um, yes, no, pretty much. So I'm sure you have as well. I have actually. Um, I have because I'm a geek and I really enjoy income tax. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, so, but it is a bit dull, isn't it? Income tax. Uh, well, you may think so, but majority of people are affected by it. Um, it's a huge stream of revenue for the government. I think in uh, I read 2019 to 2020, they received 194 billion pounds worth of income tax from the public. So it may not be the most exciting, but it's probably one of the most relevant taxes. Well, I think a lot of that 194 billion must have come from you and me, I'm sure. <laughs> so, OK, um, first question then uh, it was the budget yesterday. So mm -hmm. what, were the, what are the implications for, um, for, for all our income tax um, from the Chancellor? Uh, well, I mean, it was a big announcement. I, I think many of us have predicted it, but then what they have done are frozen the allowances available. So the less allowances available to the public um, mean the more revenue generated for the government. So we've each got our own allowance at the moment, which we can earn up to before income tax payments kick in. And many people who are in that nice buffer will probably find their salary increasing in, um, so for example, minimum wage will be going up, but their the buffer won't be getting any bigger. So they'll find themselves spilling out into the tax regime where they then have to pay a percentage to the government. And that is gonna um, be fixed from this April um, until uh, 2026, a good few years in front of us where we're not gonna get any increase in those allowances. Yeah. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously, income tax is a huge subject and it's a complex subject. So mm -hmm. what, what, what are the basics that we really need to know about? Well, uh, it's, it, the key thing is, is to get the fundamental parts and understand when and how it applies. So for anyone who has a stream of income, um, it's breaking it down into three um, brackets, really. And that's your non-savings income, such as salary, um, PAYE. Uh, pension, self-employment, profits, and um, rental income. So that's your non-savings income. Your savings income is uh, calculated slightly differently. And that includes money that's invested in the bank. Um, also, it includes uh, unit trusts and other investments. And then your third stream of income is if you've got company shares and you receive dividends on them. Um, the key thing is really it's recognising the allowances and reliefs for each of those three streams and then trying to work out where you sit within the bands that apply to those three streams as well. OK, that's helpful. And um, I've got a question that occurs to me, people often ask it. Um, what's the difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance? Oh, that's a very good question. So uh, tax evasion is... Um, tax evasion is where you are do, you're taking part in schemes that are illegal for tax purposes so you are hiding money tax avoidance is where you are making the most of the reliefs and um, allowances available to you and mitigating against the effects of that and obviously one's perfectly legitimate and the other is not yeah, and I don't like the word avoidance either. Um, if someone came to me and said, oh, I want to avoid paying tax, and my, I, just, uh, I shudder because we can't advise on how to avoid paying tax. But what we can advise are um, the release and the exemptions that are available, but that many people aren't aware of. So it's, it's kind of making the most the government allowances um, because with your income tax, it's actually person specific. So um, you've got, we've all got our own personal allowance today, we can earn up to that buffer I mentioned of 12,500, uh, due to be increased by an, a staggering 70 pounds this April. So we're gonna get 12,570 pounds worth of buffer to start with. But as an individual, what you actually get tax free is very um, person specific. So for example, if you, um, 
are partially sighted, you could get a blind person's allowance, which would increase that up by a, a further £1,000. If you qualify for marriage allowance, that would be increased. It could actually be reduced if you owe tax from a previous year. And what they then reduce is your personal allowance the next year to, to make up that shortfall. Um, and that's your starting point, really. It's looking at that personal allowance and where you sit and then how your income is calculated. And that happens in different brackets. So you can be a, a nil rate taxpayer, a basic rate taxpayer, a higher rate taxpayer, or if you earn over £150,000, you are an additional rate taxpayer. And what you need to do is work out where you sit within those, what kind of taxpayer are you? And then you can look at um, the exemptions and allowances that are available. Okay. Now, um, you're a lawyer, and mm -hmm. I'm talking, talking to you about income tax. Yes. How does that work? Why, why am I talking to you about income tax? Well, not only I'm a bit geeky, I like to look at all the taxes because that does implicate my clients and the advice that I give to them. Um, we, work, we do work closely with financial advisors and accountants, as you know. So really, um, a lot of our clients go to see accountants about their self-assessment returns or their business tax returns. Um, I tend to get more involved in the administrations of estates because one thing people aren't always aware of is that income tax doesn't stop on death, it continues after somebody's died. So um, if an executor steps in and is dealing with the administration of somebody's estate, and then their job is to divvy the money out to the beneficiaries under the will, not all executors realise they should account to HMRC in the period that someone dies until that distribution to the beneficiary is made, because HMRC still charges tax on the assets in between there. Um, and just to make it even more complicated, it's at a different rate. So it's not the tax rates that apply whilst that person's alive. And a lot of executives come undone. Yeah, they don't realise that and then they can find themselves having to account to HMRC for a tax bill where there's no money left and they could either have to pay it themselves or they have to go back to the beneficiaries and ask for money, which is quite a painful process. Okay. And mm. finally, um, millions of us have been working from home in the last year. I mean, we are both, we're talking to each other from, from our homes. Yes. Um, and what, what are the, what are the um, there must be some significant um, implications in terms of allowances, for example, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in, your, in, your, in, in people's income tax calculations. Tell me about that. Well, I think more people this year than ever should be looking at doing self-assessment returns. So even if you haven't got any other income coming in other than your um, your salary, which has already had the income tax deducted before you receive it. Um, if you have incurred expenses for working from home, for example, heating, electricity, um, and purchasing things to make working from home more comfortable, such as a new chair or a new desk, uh, things that you wouldn't necessarily ask your work to pay for because you're never going to take them back into the office, um, you can claim for those expenses in your self-assessment tax return. So people should at least start looking at how um, to complete a tax return. Go see your accountant, ask for some help. Um, if you don't have an accountant, look at the government website and try and maximise these reliefs and um, refunds that you should be able to uh, claim back for this year. Also, it could include uniform allowance as well. Not everybody realises they can claim back uniform allowance. Um, and if you are self-employed and you're doing your self-assessment, uh, really look closely at those expenses as, you know, that you can claim for part of running your business because your income tax is calculated on your profit. Brilliant. Well, that's really helpful. A lot of food for thought there. So yeah. thank you for that. I'm going to get onto my accountant as soon as we finish this call. Um, so, uh, and I think next time we're going to be talking about capital gains tax. So that's something to look forward to, isn't it? Well, you say that. You may not be looking forward to it, but I actually am. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. So thank you, Julie, and um, see you again next time. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Bye.